streaming here. Alrighty, well, here we go. I guess we are live now. Thank you for joining us here on the, uh, what is this, the uh, 15th of August at 1 o'clock or thereabouts for another live Q&A here. As the description says, we're just going to have uh, basically a time of, of you asking questions and me answering them uh, as best I can. But we also have an overarching theme to the, to the, to the Q&A session, and that is going to be too many or too many. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of a, a play on words, of course. And uh, what I'm getting at is that um, are we at the point of complete saturation with miniatures games at this point? And I know if you're a miniatures player, you're probably sat back in shock uh, from having even entertained that thought. But there are so many games out there now that have miniatures in them so much so that a lot of the what I would consider Euro style games are now using miniatures and stuff like that we just played Victoria Masterminds a couple days ago and that is a, a Euro game through and through but it has miniatures of the different buildings that you can steal being the, uh, the evil masterminds that you are so are we at the point of, wow, uh, too much is just simply too much? Or are we, you know, um, should we just continue going down this path? I, I, guess, I guess that's kind of what I'm, what I'm talking about here. So um, there we have it. Uh, that's the overarching. We don't have to focus on that. Uh, just whenever you have something... Uh, to say about it or if you have a, um, a, an idea or maybe a question or something to that effect uh, that is concerned with that overarching theme, go ahead and ask it. Ask it. Otherwise, it's just going to be a regular Q&A. So uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to break out chat here, pop out chat so that uh, I can have it be a little bit bigger. All right. All right, so um, <laughs> Rainer has showed up. Okay, Rainer says move armor assault. Uh, no, wrong video, Rainer. Uh, anyway, hi, everybody. Audio video is good. Thank you, Trevor. Uh, let's see, who downvoted this already? I don't know. I have people that don't like me, and that's just the way it goes, I guess, no matter what you do. Um, and sometimes because of what you do, just people just don't like it. But I, I guess that's just the way it is. Anonymity strikes. Uh, is that a loud fan in the background? That is the air conditioning system of the studio, so I apologize. Lots of fan noise, not using lapel mic. I am using a lapel mic. I don't know what would be going on here. So, uh, sounds like his mic is off. I don't think so. Um, mic is definitely on. See? Little green light. So, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, lots of background noise. I apologize. Okay. Derek is now here. It's Tom's fault. It's Tom's fault, he says. Um, and that should be good. Yep. Hopefully that will be uh, the correction. All right. Okay. So, um, question. Do you think... All the plastic mini game companies are making will have an environmental impact. Uh, haven't thought about that direction uh, for the conversation to go in. Um, I mean, I guess maybe if those if those ever get thrown away and are waste become waste products, and I, I guess so, yeah. But I don't know. Um, that's an interesting. It's an interesting diversion to, to what I was uh, originally, I mean, you know, I, I just never thought about that. So, huh, uh, I guess it could. Uh, the more plastic there is, I guess. Uh, I wonder if, if companies will begin using recyclable or recycled uh, materials to make their minis. That would be interesting as well. Do you ever paint minis that are not for a game? Not usually. As a matter of fact, I usually don't paint minis unless they're for somebody else, uh, at least lately. 
most of the projects that I have going right now, they're not commissions, they're more charity type things. Like we're, we're in the middle of doing, and tomorrow we're gonna be doing a live painting session, Vernon and I, for um, <coughs> a Song of Ice and Fire. But we're doing that for a person who, who uh, purchased that through the Jack Vazel Memorial Fund auction at, at Dice Tower Con. So uh, most of the painting I do isn't even for my own games, it's for other people, charity, and, and that type of thing. So. Um, no, I don't ever paint minis that aren't for a game. Not that I wouldn't, I just haven't. Uh, let's see here. Regarding the question, I think games need to have the appropriate level of components for the type of game price point. That's that's a fair assessment. I mean, it's, that's... Uh, almost a nebulous assessment because that, that should go kind of without saying uh, if a game is going to charge you X amount of dollars then it should have the components that uh, would warrant that expense. So yes, I agree with you but I think that might go without saying and more often than not. Why does it matter if there's a lot of miniatures? What's the cons? Well, um, well the environmental impact possibly, I don't know. Uh, that could be there. That might be one. But uh, an inflation of prices uh, is one thing. Uh, you might have a game that would that would play very well, and you would be very happy with it if it didn't have miniatures and it would lower the cost of the game by, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks. And, and again, those are arbitrary numbers. That's no research has gone into those or anything like that. But you get the idea, right? If you can cut uh, the price of a game by I don't know, 25, 30% simply by not having uh, uh, miniatures in them when they aren't necessary. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I, I think I would be a proponent of that um, just so that more people can afford to have the games that are out there. Um, Minis really make a, tr uh, a tabletop game pop. Is it, it, It's so much more satisfying than, than moving chits or meeples. I, I agree with that. I completely do. But at the same time, uh, is there a jump the shark moment that is either already past us or on the horizon? Um, I don't know. That's that's why we're that's why that's why I open the subject. Uh, Trevin Taylor, um, would you ask, are there too many meeples? Are cubes just fine? We prefer meeples to cubes as we prefer many to meeple, right? Well, that is true. Uh, however, again, where I, I, I guess uh, I'm, I'm coming at it from a very generalistic viewpoint. And, and these points that are coming up are points that are valid to discuss. So I'm just opening the topic. I, I don't have a settled or concrete uh, solution or conclusion uh, to how I feel about the topic. Uh, Rainer says, I don't think the market is oversaturated, nor do I think it is a bad path. On the other hand, anything included in the game should serve a purpose. Okay, and that is um, that is kind of where I'm, I'm at. Um, uh, so, good point. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know how to expound on that just yet. Uh, it would be nice if minis were sold in a separate expansion pack, especially for Euro-style games or family games. That would be interesting, um, where miniatures are provided, but they are not part of the base game, nor are they part of the pricing of the base game. Uh, if you want to spend the extra money on them, you can. That might be a good idea. Uh, what games do you suggest to bring with me on the cruise? <laughs> well, we are going to have a full library there. So unless you just want to have your own copy, you don't want to have to worry about somebody else having the game out and that type of thing, uh, that's completely up to you. I don't think there are any kinds of games that would be better to bring on the cruise than others. So it's we have a pretty good library uh, at on the cruise. So I don't think that you should worry about not being able to play a game unless it's a fairly or definitely new game, which may or may not make it its way into the, the library. But even then, we, we do have a lot of um, games that we have here that we donate to the, the library and then get them back afterwards. So 
But again, there might be quantity of games. You know, the, the number of copies you, you, may not, uh, you may not be able to get your hands on it when you want to play it. So there is that. Let me reiterate that my mic was on the entire time. <laughs> there was just a setting on the camera that was, that was strange about the uh, audio earlier. So there you go. Second thing, fr second question from Rainer. Having minis just to have minis is the wrong approach. Okay, that's, that I agree with. It's like having an app with a loosely defined purpose. If the minis have a function, great, even if that function is small. Anachrony. Uh, well, see, anachrony was one of the ones I was actually, that actually came to mind when I talked about, in my own head at least, uh, introducing this topic. Uh, anachrony is, is one of those games where the miniatures that come in it, the only thing that they do, they don't, um, well, I guess they, they represent your faction, I guess, but they just hold a chit. You know, they hold a little cardboard token that, and that's all they do. Um, they, they serve no other purpose other than the aesthetic presence that they bring, which I guess is okay, but and I, if I'm not mistaken, those came in, a, in an expansion as well. So again, that's just one that originally came to mind. That's, that is through and through a Euro game. Um, and those miniatures serve very little purpose uh, at all. So that was, it's just funny that you mentioned Anachrony because that's the one that actually brought it up. Um, Nicolo uh, says, uh, or Niccolo says, uh, what are your thoughts on Keyforge? Uh, Keyforge is a very interesting idea and uh, avenue for, for creating a card game. Uh, I like the fact that every deck is unique in its own way. I like the fact that not everybody is going to have their own deck. Um, I, I like the gameplay, how simple it is, and you don't have to memorize a uh, dictionary worth of key terms so that you can understand what you're supposed to do in any, any situation with the, this card or that card. Um, so I like it. I just hope that it doesn't become too inflated and uh, full of itself, I guess you could say, because I like the simplistic and yet very strategic and tactical play that it, that it, that it brings. So I, I do enjoy Keyforge a lot. Uh, Johannes says, we're going to play Blood Rage for the first time this Sunday. Any advice for teaching the draft part? Your first draft in the first age <clears throat> should be the slowest because everybody, I don't know how many people you're playing with that have played the game before, but everybody should be reading the cards and making sure they understand what they do uh, during that first age. In the second and third age, the cards that you use are very similar to the first. They're just more powerful in, in successively in uh, the second age and then the third age as well. So by the second and third age, you should be familiar with the cards that you are looking at. Just understand that they are simply more powerful than they were in the first age. So uh, teaching the draft part um, shouldn't be too, gif too difficult. Just make sure that you deal eight cards and you only draft six. So when you get a hand of cards at the end of the draft and you have three cards, you're going to choose one of them and those last two go into the discard pile. Do not draft all eight cards because you're going to have a longer game and you're going to have a wildly high scoring uh, point game, uh, point scoring game. So it's going to throw the game off a bit if you draft all eight cards. Uh, Jason, hate that I didn't run into a Gen Con, but you know, Gen Con, that's very true. Uh, hi, Catherine. Good to see you. I'm glad, glad you were able to stop by. Um, that's my daughter, by the way. <laughs> so uh, say hi to Catherine. Uh, Jim says, for me, it depends on how well the minis bring out the theme. Uh, in Victoria Masterminds, the minis look cool, but miss the mark thematically since the impact of taking one is so generic. Yeah, that's true. Seems like a missed opportunity. Um, taking a building or stealing a building is, is basically just like I, I'm getting two victory points. That's it. Um, you don't do anything else with those buildings. You simply take them and put them down in front of you, and then they sit there for the rest of the game, representing that you have two points. 
Oh yeah. Um, not not sure that that's enough validation for how much extra cost. And again, I don't know how much extra it costs to include those miniatures. They look great. Don't get me wrong. Um, but was that putting miniatures into a game just for the sake of having miniatures in the game, uh, or what? <laughs> or what? That's that's basically it. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, Mr. Travis Chaos says, Sam, do you think we are headed towards a period where companies compete via shock minis, minis or huge minis like the almost three foot Cthulhu by Simon? Well, I certainly hope not. Um, there was a company, I can't remember the guy's name now. Oh, it's bugging me. Um, with Cthulhu Wars. I can't remember. Can't remember. Peterson. Peterson Games. There you go. Uh, that really kind of shock and awed people with, with the whole Cthulhu Wars having these huge miniatures on the table. They are actually used in the game. We're not talking about the ones that aren't used. Um, I was contacted by some people at Gen Con that are, that are producing, I can't remember what it was, uh, I don't know, it was a giant mini, mini. Uh, it was a miniature of a giant, but it was giant, <laughs> uh, about this tall if I imagine correctly, maybe not three feet tall, but uh, like uh, the Cthulhu was. And they were wondering, they're going to be running a Kickstarter, they wanted to know if, if uh, I would uh, paint the mini for them and all this other kind of stuff, haven't got back to them yet. but. Just because you're mentioning this here, uh, it made me think of that. People are starting to go down that path. Now, statues are have been made forever, right? Um, and really, those are life-size miniatures, I guess you could call them, in some cases. Some cases, not life-size. But So people have always made huge figures. Will that become a trend in, in board gaming? I certainly hope not. And I think that's the question that you're, you're uh, kind of running out there. Uh, let's see. Rainer, that's a, way to, uh, that's a good way to teach me mechanism. <laughs> Pick a card you find interesting, pass the cards. Try to be diverse. Yeah, that's pretty good. Hello, I Igor from Ukraine. Hello, good to see you. Um, don't think there's a problem with the volume of mini games. Just originality seems to be rehashes. Yeah, and and that unfortunately is kind of how most of the time it goes. Yeah, um, there are. Uh, it seems like though they're selling the miniatures, and they're not selling the game, uh, and and that's kind of where I'm I'm t I'm coming from. Uh, I don't want to get to a place where. Uh, and really, I kind of feel like we already are. There is a Kickstarter that is filled with games that have miniatures. And they do well because they have miniatures, not because it's a good game per se. And, and, and that's where I'm kind of coming from here. Uh, <laughs> Three Foot Cthulhu is a fairly daft product, yes. That is, that is probably pretty true. Um, from a retail standpoint, Brand Sanderson, minis are a great way to give a game visual appeal, yes, but they also drive up the price for gamers just entering the hobby. Hobby, also true. Moms and dads shopping for kids' gifts, etc. And <clears throat> I understand that from an economical, capitalist point of view. Um, I guess I'm trying to put some of that to the side and think more practically rather than economically. Uh, because I understand why, from an economic point of view, it's going to bring in more money for said company. But um, is that going to leave a bad taste in somebody's mouth when they get the game and they, they say that I, I spent all this money on this game and these miniatures really aren't even necessary? <clears throat> now, again, because uh, who is it? Uh, uh, Robert uh, Geislinger I sa uh, said to me one day that I could literally play Blood Rage with nothing but tokens. And this is true. However, <laughs> um, I think that the uh, the way the miniatures, at least in Blood Rage, and I'm not just trying to defend my favorite game. In Blood Rage, those miniatures represent something. You have a leader miniature. He represents a certain level of power, of fighting ability. Then you have uh, your warriors, which represent 
your clan and your fighting ability. But then you also have, if you have the expansion stuff, you have um, the um, the mystics, and they have a different scope, and, and they represent something different, more. Uh, a, a special power that, that the warriors and the leader doesn't have. And then the monsters, they all have different abilities as well. So they represent not just a unit, they represent uh, a special thing that's going to happen or a special kind of, a, uh, of power or fighting ability or something to that effect. They, they represent more than just things. Um, and, and, and that's, I think, my threshold, I guess you could say, for do minis have a purpose in a game? Uh, now, if we go back to the Victorian Minds, uh, the Victorian Masterminds thing, the, the buildings represent two points. That's it. They don't represent any special ability that you now have for having uh, stolen that building. Uh, it doesn't give you any kind of um, in-game bonus or anything like that. It is literally just two points at the end of the game. And, and for me at least, and I'm not talking about whether I enjoy the game or not, just from, a, from that point of view of are the minis necessary, I don't think they were. Um, so that's it. It makes the game look better, makes the game pop on the, on the table, but it doesn't really serve a purpose beyond that. Um, uh, so I've, I've seen people dumping all the minis into baggies and pouches. It pains me when I see that. Your thoughts? That's precisely why we have inserts, right? Yes, that is true. Um, but realize that inserts uh, often <laughs> cost the same or more than the game did. And so you are actually doubling your investment in that game by buying an insert sometimes. Now, you could say, well, then just make your, your, your own foam core insert or something like that. By all means, do that. Um, but uh, again, uh, if you don't have your miniatures painted and you're not going to paint the miniatures, putting them in a, in a baggie is not as egregious as, as you might think they are. Uh, I know that I've done that with games uh, because I, I, I haven't painted them. Now, after I paint them or if I paint them, am I going to change that? Maybe. Um, I, and maybe I will buy the insert. Maybe I will, uh, you know, buckle down and, and make my own insert. I don't know. But until I get that to that point where I need to protect the miniatures in some way, shape, or form because there is a layer of paint on them, and I don't want that to get messed up, uh, putting them in a baggie is fine. I think at least it helps with setup. <coughs> uh, let's see here. Any news about Awkward Guests being published by uh, Arcane Wonders? No. I, I don't have any, any uh, inroads there. Don't see a problem. Lawrence Stanley says, I don't see a problem with lots of minis, but I don't like games that have way too many chits or cardboard tokens. Uh, just seems to overcomplicate things. I understand that, but if you're going to, if you're going to replace some, if not all, of those cardboard chits, wouldn't you then have too many miniatures uh, following that same logic? Uh, and, and so there has to be a balance somewhere, and that's, that's really what I'm trying to look for here in this discussion, a balance between uh, or maybe a line of demarcation where uh, there is uh, the miniatures are validated at this point, but beyond that point, they would, they would no longer have validation. I don't know. Uh, Jerry uh, says, uh, to clarify, I mean more like if the gameplay itself warrants a higher pri price point, should a 10-minute party game cost $60 because they added miniatures? I would say definitely not, because the gameplay that you're talking about doesn't warrant that $60. And I agree, so I agree with what you're saying here. Um, so, uh, yes. Uh, let's see. I don't know... Uh, Tears Guard says, I don't know. I don't see all that much value in unpainted miniatures over meeples. Way too many gray pieces on the board. And I can agree with that as well. Um, uh, that's why I like that some companies have been coming out with uh, different colors uh, for the different factions of their molds. Um, I like that. 
uh, because it simplifies things. It makes it easy for people who aren't into painting. Uh, they don't have all these gray blobs all over the all over the table. They have uh, th these are my armies because they're red, and those are yours because they're blue. I like that. That that really does work out. But it then still allows people who do have uh, the the desire to paint and, and that type of thing. It gives them still the ability to paint those miniatures. Um, but if you don't want to, don't have to. Uh, hey, Jay Peak showed up. Hello, Jay. Nice to see you. Uh, you've probably been here for a while. I'm I'm a little I'm a little behind, but uh, let's see here. All right, there we go. <laughs> Uh, let's see, would you prefer color standees or unpainted minis? Well, even standees presents their own problems. I just reviewed uh, Tsukuyumi uh, Full Moon Down. It uh, uh, has a, a mountain of standees in it. Uh, but even those, they were very difficult, and you have to uh, kind of perform a little bit of surgery on them to, to get, get them to the point where the, 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 the bottoms, the feet of the standees don't um, damage the 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 cardboard as you're slipping them into those feet uh, so you have to kind of clip off the teeth that are inside the, the the little crevice there that you stick the, the the cardboard inside and that just that's a lot of setup time that's a lot of stuff that you have to do it's a lot of time spent getting the game ready to hit the table um, And, okay, Jim is going back to Victoria Masterminds. Uh, he says, uh, in Victoria, stealing the Eiffel Tower will do something like get you a bolt for your machine. Seems to me that it could have been something more thematic. I wanted the whole experience to feel more dastardly. Uh, well, that, that, that is the theme. You are these, these evil masterminds back in the Victorian era, and you're trying to just cause havoc by, by stealing this. You know, it's a very uh, Minions-type feel where... Uh, Groot is trying to steal the moon or he you know somebody stole this huge building over here and, and it just auto automatically disappeared one day that's the idea behind it so if you steal one of the main buildings uh, from each of the I think oh goodness five or six different sites that are on the board it gives you a victory point, uh, like a, a little token that, that is a point, uh, two points after the game. And then the, the, um, the uh, miniature itself, the building itself, is also worth two points. So, uh, but, and then if you steal one of the other four uh, kinds of buildings that are there, they give you other kinds of things that you can use a, a bolt to help build part of your machine or a, a metal scrap that helps build part of your machine or uh, some library of some codex that you're trying to, uh, some book of some codex that you're trying to collect. So they, they all have different uses, but hmm, uh, it, uh, it just doesn't seem necessary. Uh, it feels to me like they just put these miniatures in there just because they wanted to have miniatures in this game. And it makes the game pop, I know, but it just seems wrong on some level. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Rainer says to bring lifeboats on the cruise. I don't know about that. That seems a little bit too on the nose. Uh, let's see. I've noticed so many games pop up on Kickstarter with minis, and many have awesome sculpts. That is true. Uh, minis used to be much uh, more of a selling point for a game. Now it's really like every game has minis. Well, that's an overstatement. Every game doesn't have minis, but I understand your sentiment. It just seems like they are a dime a dozen, right? Uh, it's just they always are, uh, they always seem to be at the forefront. And really, that's because the miniatures are doing what they should be doing, right? They should be bringing a lot of attention to the game. Um, but again, when we focus so much on the miniatures and wow, look at those sculpts, look at those details, look at how uh, intricate that, that mini is and it's gonna look so great after it's painted. Are we forgetting that we're actually purchasing a game? Or are we purchasing the game? Are we just purchasing the miniatures and we don't care if the game is good? That's a slippery slope in, in, in my opinion because the hobby is all about playing good games, right? What happens when we have a whole bunch of great miniatures 
but a whole bunch of mediocre games. That's what I'm trying to stay away from. That's what I don't want to go to because, you know, we are in kind of a bubble. I feel like we are on the bubble and just a hair's breadth away from uh, this popularity that our hobby is, is experiencing right now going away because people are tired of being taken advantage of by company A for doing this and being taken advantage of for, by company B for doing that. And I'm just wondering if, if um, somewhere in the future we might have that be one of the things that people are just tired of. We've got too many miniatures and games are too expensive because there's too many miniatures. So, um, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Trevin Taylor says the mini push seems to be Kickstarter cause phenomenon. I, I agree with that. I don't see the saturation of minis in mainstream games. It, isn't this just that Kickstarter is becoming a bigger force for the market? Well, that's true, but isn't that a problem? Because if the problem exists on Kickstarter and Kickstarter is becoming a larger and larger and larger force within the hobby, that means the problems of this saturation within Kickstarter is going to grow as well. Maybe. I don't know for sure, but it just seems like it, it's a trend that I hope goes away. Um, not that I don't want to see um, less miniatures. I just don't want to be a focus on miniatures to the detriment of the games, uh, to the quality of the games, rather. <coughs> I think minis are, are nice to look at, but I personally would take Meeple from Meeple Source any day before minis. Uh, they are already colored. Okay, I agree with that. Um, I don't know that I would like to use Meeple Source, though, as a, a view of something that would be good for the board game hobby economy because they their prices are really, really high. Um, I have bought very few things from Meeple Source because I could not justify it in my mind. The small package of of wooden little thingies for twenty dollars, or you know, even more than that sometimes depends on the game, I guess. But um, I, I partially agree with what you said there, Hugo. Hugo, but not not completely. Um, Yes, Rainer uh, restated what I already said. The, the Anachrony minis came separate. You had to purchase them separately, so that's fine. I get that. You want to bling out your game with these miniatures and make it pop more on the board? Super duper. But um, don't make it part of the base game if they're not necessary in some way, shape, or form. Uh, have you ever not bought a game because you have missed out on exclusive minis? No. Um, let me say this. I, as a general rule uh, that I impose upon myself, I usually don't kickstart any games. Uh, to date, I've only kickstarted one game, and it was because I, I, I really wanted to see the game. I wanted to do everything I could to see the game succeed. Um, <clears throat> so I, I don't like putting money into something that, that uh, you know, in some cases I will never see or some cases that it will be years down the line that I will get the reward from. And, and, and I mean purchasing products. I understand investments and all that other kind of stuff. But I'm talking about, uh, you know, I don't want to buy a product and then not have that product come to me for years. That, that just doesn't make sense to me. Um, so we can talk about Kickstarter another time. But... Um, uh, the, the answer is no, I've never bought a game. I've never chosen not to buy a game because I missed out on exclusive minis. Uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Which game has your favorite minis? Not necessarily the best gameplay, but, but the best, coolest minis. Um, I'm, I'm really very... Um, I really like... Uh, Games Workshop miniatures the best. They are my favorite kinds of miniatures. 
Not necessarily to put together, although I will say that the, uh, the easy put together, the easy line of models that they have to put together that have only like three or four different pieces and they all kind of pop into place, those are my favorites because they are simple to put together and they still have that level of quality that Games Workshop is known for. Um, those are my favorite kinds of miniatures for games. Um, and beyond that, I don't really know because I don't buy miniatures for not having games. So, but uh, Games Workshop and, you know, Warhammer 40K, Age of Sigmar, all those kinds of things. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Jim came up with a nice idea. <laughs> well, he thought it was nice. Um, if I'm playing Blood Rage with new players, I often don't draft the first age, just deal eight cards and discard two. The draft starting in the second age when folks at least have the benefit of a round of experience. Yeah, yeah but you've taken out one of my favorite parts of the game by doing that, if only for one age. Uh, I don't know that I would do that. Uh, John Whitesnake, hi Sam, hello John. Are you still playing Shadespire? Uh, I am, um, and I'm enjoying it tremendously. Have you tried out Kill Team? I have. I have. I, I was able to demo it at Gen Con, and we just got a copy uh, yesterday morning, uh, our review copy. So uh, I have already started putting putting together some of the miniatures. I actually did a what's in there um, unboxing slash this is how you put the miniatures together in a general way uh, video yesterday, and that's going to be coming up uh, here in the next few days as well. But uh, very, very much looking forward to uh, getting some playtime with Kill Team, and it looks very fun. And I enjoyed the demo. Um, David Dyke, starting a church game night. Any thoughts, uh, any ideas or suggestions would be appreciated. Uh, a couple of things, and this is what I say to everybody. First of all, make sure your pastor is on board um, with having the game night. Uh, give him a list of, of um, possible titles, game titles that you're going to be having there, just so that he can look over them and ask you any questions about the games, because you don't want to have, you know, uh, you know, for example, you don't want to bring wits and wagers, uh, which is very heavily about gambling and, and uh, betting and all of that kind of stuff, uh, and then find out that your, your, your pastor uh, has, you know, uh, uh, I don't want to say a problem, but, but has something against um, the, the, that kind of idea. Now, I, I understand that Witch and Wagers is, is not all about, it's a trivia game, but it includes and it has that theme there. So you really do need to talk to your pastor about um, what he is, is okay with and what he's not okay with. Um, be very upfront and um, be accommodating, um, even if you don't agree with, with some of the convictions he may have. He's the guy. He's he's the guy in charge here on Earth. <laughs> so, um, and and uh, so, talk to him. Be open with him. Decide whether or not this is going to be an outreach uh, to get other people to come into the church, or if it's going to be a fellowship thing that you're going to do for the people, the members of the church, because that will also affect uh, some of the different things that you do. If you do plan on it being an outreach, do not. Uh, snipe a Bible study uh, in the middle of the in the middle of the uh, game night. You know, be if you're inviting people to play games, invite people to play games. Um, if you're going to have a Bible study, you need to be absolutely honest with those those people that you're inviting in that there is going to be a short Bible time or what have you uh, during the course of the evening, so that they can make the the choice. Uh, don't uh, don't ambush them with a Bible study. That's that's not good. That'll leave a bad taste in their mouth. Uh, it'll make you look bad. Uh, so yeah, that's just a few things. Uh, any word on Fury Dracula Fourth Edition from with the new painted minis? Not that I know of. I have not heard anything about it. Uh, what percentage of cruise attendees are non-gaming spouses? I don't know. Um, probably, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to venture to guess either because I, I wouldn't have a clue. Uh, but there are a good number of them. Uh, that Because, you know, going on a cruise, you can do whatever you want. You can spend all day in, in, in the... Uh, uh, in, in the cafeteria, you can spend all day at the pool, you can go to the spa, you can go to play basketball, you can go on the wave rider, you can go, there's so many different things you can do on that boat that um, 
uh, this it's probably one of the best places to have a board game convention because those who are interested in the board gaming aspect they can go play board games and the people who are not interested in playing board games they have uh, they have a, a plethora of different things that can that, that they can do uh, let's see in in Europe the German edition of Forbidden Desert has minis uh, they give you an, ad an added sense of identity on the board oh okay that's cool. Well, I, I, I know Forbidden Desert came with the uh, miniatures of all of the different little components and stuff like that that you're trying to put together. And then you could actually uh, piece that little airship or whatever it is uh, together as well. Uh, but, hmm, okay. Uh, question, will you be at Dice Tower West? I will be there. We'll be good to see you also. Will there be vendors? Uh, yes, I'm pretty sure there will be vendors. Um, uh, MeepleCon has, has always had miniatures. Uh, miniatures, my goodness. Vendors, uh, they have grown over the last three years that we've been going. So I would, I would imagine that they are going to continue and probably even grow after that. Uh, with them being right before Gamma, um, it's been easier to get some of those larger um, uh, vendors to come on in because they were all at Gamma anyway, so they just stopped by with MeebleCon. Now it's going to be right before Gamma, so I don't know if that's going to throw off, throw that off kilter or not. Uh, hopefully it doesn't. Um, MeebleCon was one of my favorite conventions of the year um, because it provided a, a, a little bit of a respite from the, all the work that went into Gamma. So. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be there this year or not. Um, we haven't made, uh, well, I haven't uh, made plans. We don't, we don't ever really know until we actually buy the, the tickets and all that other kind of stuff. So we'll see. Uh, Sam's not reading his chat. Sure I am. That's where I'm getting all of these from. Uh, let's see. <laughs> that Cthulhu isn't a mini. It's a maxi. That's true. All right. My problem with miniature games is that by the time I paint them all, all a, okay. By the time I paint them all, a new miniature game is coming out. Okay. Yes, that's true. Uh, but uh, that's where you have to exercise a little bit of restraint and and try to pull back uh, from from that. Do you think skirmish games are going to take the place of these big long war games? Well, uh, they could. Um, I know I like skirmish games a lot better than the than the long sprawling uh, war games that are out there. But that's just me, and I don't. I don't think that. Um, um, I don't think that there is a dearth of people who enjoy long war games. There's a lot of them out there, so I don't think that uh, we're going to see them go away. I don't think they're going to be replaced. Um, but I, I, I would definitely like to see more skirmish games out there. Uh, Jim Bridgen says, uh, "Cthulhu Wars looks great." But uh, it is the poster child of overproduction. That is very, very true. Um, and really, it doesn't look that great after you get them painted. <laughs> no, that sounds weird. It just, they look disgusting. Those big miniatures, some of them, uh, they are just disgusting. Uh, but uh, that's just my, my opinion and my, my taste. So over, uh, don't, don't overthink that. Do you think Keyforge will be player, playable with more than two players? I don't know. I have no other... Uh, further information than, than what you guys have available to you as well. So I, I really don't have an idea. Uh, let's see here. Oh, my chat jumped up on me again. Uh, where is that? Okay, there we go. Um, let's see. Have you played the Reckoners? Yes. Um, I think the Reck. If so, what did you think? Still waiting for your copy in the mail. Can't wait. Okay. Well, I don't want to diminish your anticipation of the game at all, but I, I, I think the game is a little too hard. I, I want cooperative games like that to be a, uh, not so easy that you beat it every time. But I want you. I want to have the 50/50 possibility of winning, and I don't think that that's where it's at. Now the designer is. Uh, you know, Tom's talked to the designer a lot, and he said, "Oh, we we can we can win it almost every time we play." Well, yeah, you designed the game, though, you know. <laughs> so um, they probably play tested it a humpty million times as well. So 
I, I don't know that a game should be that difficult to where you have to play it humpteen million times before you have the opportunity or at least the know-how to, to struggle through a win. Uh, now, Tom has said that he's, he's beat the game once. And it was a squeaker at that. So I understand that it, you don't have to play that much, but it just was too hard for me. I enjoyed a lot of the mechanisms. The insert is, is amazingly well done. Uh, the components are all great, um, but I just thought it was a little too difficult. That's about it though. Uh, let's see, Me, minis are a tangible means of inserting yourself into the game world. I agree. I, I can I can uh, agree with that, but uh, again, there's got to be a point at which too much is too much, and uh, it's you know it's too too. Come over and play Black Plague this weekend, Mr. Hyde. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know that I'll be able to do that. Uh, first of all, I don't know where you live. Second of all, um, yeah. Uh, let's see. There is no second of all. Um, I think your Q&As are my favorite ones from the Dice Tower. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, let's see here. A good compromise would be for the companies to provide two sets of games, the regular version with chit standees, tokens, and, and a deluxe version with minis, especially in Kickstarters. Yeah, I guess that seems like it would be uh, a fix that's right there on the, you know, it's, it's right in front of you. That's the, that's the answer. But I don't know how, if that puts too much undue stress on the company itself. How, how are you going to gauge, how would you gauge whether or not your, your, your game is going to be want, is that people are going to want to purchase your game at that deluxe version? Um, and how many of them are going to want to purchase the non-deluxe version? And so how many of these do I make over these? And, and so that might be putting a little bit too much undue stress on, on, the, um, on the company. First, first blush. But uh, I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Is Days of Wonder my favorite board game company? Hmm. Well, I do like a I, I do like a lot of day, Days of Wonder games. That's for sure, uh, and I think there's a lot of their games that are in my top ten and twenty of all time as well. So you might could say that, but uh, uh, I don't know. I, I really don't have a I guess you could say a a tried and true favorite company. Uh, I try to judge each game not by the company that produces them, but but the, its own by its own merits. So. I mean, cool many or not, I have a lot of their a lot of their games I really enjoy as well, or Seam Unlimited the, the way they are now. Um, uh, used to be Fantasy Flight, but it seems like Fantasy Flight is just almost like a one or two trick pony at this point with uh, X Wing and Armada and and Imperial Assault and that type of stuff. So, hmm. Um, no, I don't think I have a favorite company per se. Um, I have I have ones that I gravitate towards, I guess. But uh, Matigo is one that uh, really is kind of in the background. But it's uh, they they I don't think there are too many Matigo games that I that I don't like. So, but again, I don't think I have one that stands out above the rest. Uh, Let's see here. What did you think of Rise of Fenris? I didn't actually play Rise of Fenris. Tom played that with, uh, I want to say, Melody and Derek. I want to say that. I think they did three players. Do I watch Rick and Morty? No, I don't. Um, let's see here. Can I get a shout out? Hello, Buster, Excalibur Edits. Uh, all right. Nice to see you. Here, at least. Publishers could offer different versions. Yeah, uh, we already kind of talked about that. Is Rise of Moloch likely to get a review? That's on that's on Z's uh, queue right now. Um, 
he when it came in he was he was really excited for it so he took it um, we we got two years ago I think and not not this not this year but last year uh, we all kind of sat down for a playthrough of it and we enjo we enjoyed Rise of Moloch um, but um, haven't played it since so I don't know what he has going on for it Minis are going to be like special effects in movies. It used to be people made a point of seeing a film for the effects. Now it's expected for effects to be good and doesn't excuse a lack of story. Interesting. That's a, that is a good analogy. And, and uh, MGK 2020 said the same thing. So uh, that might be it. Yeah. Go Bears. Go Bears. Uh, let's see. The only reason, Jesse says, the only reason he backed Death May Die was for the giant Cthulhu mini. Hmm. Well, um, I don't know that I would agree with that logic and, and whether or not I'm going to put that much money into a game. Uh, did you ever end up playing DC Justice League game that came out at Essen? I didn't hear good initial reviews, but I'm still interested in it. I, Jay, I did not. I have not played it. It is still sitting on my shelving unit that's right by my desk, and I look at it every day. I just haven't got to it. Uh, Sue Park says, so many Games Workshop products flooding the market. Heroes of Blackreach, um, Warhammer Champions, Shadespire. How would you rank them for somebody who does not enjoy painting models? Well, uh, Heroes of Blackreach, Warhammer Champions, those don't have any miniatures in it at all. So, I mean, one is a card game and the other one is a, uh, a game that's built around the Heroes of Normandy system that have uh, cardboard tiles that are top-down uh, pictures of the unit and it has all of the uh, units stats and abilities on the actual token so um, you don't even have to worry about painting miniatures with heroes of black reach nor uh, warhammer champions with shadespire each faction is each faction has a different color for their models so you don't even have to paint them either. The only thing that painting does is it helps you differentiate between who is who within your uh, squad. Uh, but there's a pictorial representation on every character card and you can usually, doesn't take very long at all, figure out who is who uh, very quickly. So um, I don't think with either, with any of those three, you need to worry about painting your models. Uh, and all of them warhammer champions i need to play it again to to see how i really feel about it but heroes of black reach i love the heroes of normandy system that devil pig came up with with yellow uh so slapping a warhammer 40k uh theme on top of it that's like a no-brainer for me so i can't wait for that one to come out but uh, i don't think any of those three you really need to worry about painting miniatures uh, Kickstarter could be the the mini heavy tier versus the cube tier. <laughs> okay, that's true. Uh, uh, thanks for meeting me at Gen Con. Can you re recommend a more accessible and affordable Warhammer 40k game? <sighs> um, not that I have experience with. Um, there are a lot of uh, miniature tabletop games that are out there, but I don't have a lot of experience with them all. So, uh, again, I, I, would, I, would be, I would be remiss to, to recommend something that I haven't actually played. Um, so, I apologize. I'm sorry. Do I like escape room games? No, I don't. Um, I much prefer actual escape rooms to escape room games because part of the lure of escape rooms for me is the activity of going through it not staring at this card for 20 minutes trying to figure out the hidden code that's there um, i know that's part of some uh, escape rooms but there's the immersion factor in an escape room that is lacking in the escape room games so that's why I don't like escape room games. They don't have the immersion factor that uh, actual escape rooms do. Uh, let's see here. I agree that drafting is one of the best parts of Blood Rage, uh, but when players are unfamiliar with what the cards are in the deck, it's difficult to have them 
uh, it's difficult for them to have strategy and drafting anyway. Help start. I, again, that's that's venturing terribly close, at least in my opinion, to underestimating your your new player. Uh, you're saying, in essence, they're not going to understand how all these cards work together anyway. So, who cares? Just make it easy for them. Nah, I don't. I don't really like that ideology. I don't really like that flow of logic. Um, I would rather take a few extra minutes and explain that these cards are going to work for the rest of the game. These cards are possibly going to chain with other cards in, other, um, in, in the other ages. So you can know, and, and I usually tell people this, the cards that you're going to see in age two and three are going to be very similar to what you're looking at right now. They're just going to be more powerful. So I explain all that to them and then we do the draft because I really do believe that drafting is, is, is a very, is an integral part of that game. And doing without it in the first stage, I think is doing the game a little bit of disservice. Um, and I don't think that people who are new to the hobby, if you've, if you've been diligent about recommending them to play Blood Rage, not because you wanted to play it, but, but because you think they will like it, and it's a game that, that they're going to enjoy, and it's very similar to other games they enjoy, and so forth and so on. You're not trying to just get them to play the game because you want to play the game. Don't underestimate them. And just give them the game and play the game with them the way it should be played so that they can make that determination on their own. Um, let's see here. All right, here we go. We got a uh, John says, just want to say thank you. He got me into Memoir 44 and just taught it to my mom. We're having a blast. That's awesome. That is great. Uh, um, I, I really like the fact that you've been able to uh, uh, teach it to your mom and, and uh, enjoy it. Memoir 44 is one of my favorite games, and it's definitely my go-to war game. And yes, please, war gamers, I did this, so please leave me alone. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Fury of Jackie is allegedly set for October release. Thank you, Mr. Hyde. <clears throat> um, do I have any children? Yes, I have four children. I have two older ones. Uh, I have uh, 18, uh, a 19 year old, 18 year old, and then I also have a 15 year old daughter and a, uh, a seven year old son. He's about to be eight. Uh, yes. Other effect of skipping the age one draft is that it handicaps the experienced players since knowing the cards ahead of time does provide significant advantage. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Or the eight cards that you get could have a lot of heavy hitting cards and you actually have helped somebody do well. So there's two sides to every coin, Jim. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah. <clears throat> All right, let's see here. What is the most luck-based game you've played? Wow. Um, I guess it would have to be a dice game, yeah. Um, I don't know. The most luck-based game that I've ever played. Probably Age of War. Age of War is just a little dice game where you're trying to uh, uh, get control of these different uh, fortresses in, in feudal Japan. And... Um, the only way you can get them is by rolling the right combination of, of die faces uh, in order to claim that card. Uh, and so I think that's probably the most luck-based game. It's a very fun game, and it's quick, fast, but uh, uh, probably one of the most luck-based games I've ever played. What theme would you replace Lords of Hellas? I don't know that I would. I like that theme. Um, that, that mythology, you know... Uh, Greek mythology versus all these other pantheons that are out there. I like that. I like that theme. So, um, nah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't switch it. I don't think. Uh, are you torn on Death May Die? You seem to be a big C my fan and, and hate Cthulhu games. Well, I have. I actually have played an iteration of Death May Die. It was. It was at the gathering this year, but it was. I don't know how how old of an iteration it was. I don't think too old but um, I know from 
that while we were at the gathering and, and allowing people to demo it at the gathering, that, that they made changes in between almost, well, I don't know, almost, but I know that they made at least a few changes during the course of those demonstrations at the gathering. So again, I don't know how old my iteration was that I played, but it was, it was a fun, difficult experience. Um, but um, again, yeah, it has that Cthulhu theme on it that I'm just kind of tired of. Uh, and I never really liked it that much to begin with, but um, yeah. Tom has been recommending a uh, book series lately in his Q and A's. Do you have anything that you'd recommend? No. I don't. Uh, he, he's a speed reader, so he can sit down and read a book in a day. Um, I take a couple of weeks, and uh, it takes me just longer to read. So no, I don't have any, any recommendations on that front. I apologize. Uh, heard that you, t you guys sometimes say that you will keep a game in your collection because it's so good. What do you do with those you, that you don't What's the best way you get money back for used games? Uh, more often than not, the games that we have in our collection, now not all of them, of course, because I've purchased games before, but um, many of the games that are in my collection are games that were review copies that, that either I or somebody here did a review of, and, and then we just kept them. Now, uh, we all kind of have the same idea on a varying level of impact that when we take games in, we have to get rid of some games as well because, well, we don't have an infinite amount of storage space in our homes, respectively. So uh, usually we, we, we uh, get rid of them. Uh, they will go to, in, in years past, we've had a booth at the uh, Dice Tower uh, Con flea market and we just sold them there and then we split the money between us. Uh, what we have done since is that we've, we've um, uh, we've they've they've gone to the cool mini or not booth in the ex, in the uh, exhibitors hall at Dice Tower Con, and on their ding and dent section or something to that effect, and and they are sold there. So that's what we do. Usually get rid of them. Uh, what if we just judge favorite company, quote unquote? Trevin says solely based on how many boxes from that company make it to the shelf. Uh, I don't have a percentage. <laughs> I know that I have one section of one of my shelves that is completely Days of Wonder. Uh, so maybe Days of Wonder is very close to being one of my favorite companies. I, I do have a number of games from them. I know that. But I just don't know exactly what percentage or even a ballpark percentage of what it might be. Do you play any of the FFG Star Wars games? Clone Wars coming to them all is exciting. Uh... I, I still have my Imperial Assault stuff, I still have all of my X-Wing stuff, I still have all of my Armada stuff, and I also have the new, um, uh, goodness, I forgot the name of the game now, uh, the new tabletop game that they came out with. Um, <laughs> uh, goodness, why am I forgetting that? I cannot remember. Anyway, I have that as well, that we've all been sent for review. Uh, honestly, the only FFG game that I have played consistently uh, through, through, uh, since it's come out, uh, and really not, that doesn't mean that I, I play it all the time, but it's Star Wars Rebellion. Uh, that's the one that I've probably played uh, the most. Uh, the other ones are, are uh, um, just not as, as drawing in for me. Uh, Let's see here. Great meeting you at Gen Con. Thank you, Brandon. Plus, great to meet fellow Texan. Yeah, there you go, man. Uh, uh, Brandon says, love the live show. It was my 11-year-old daughter's favorite event at the Gen Con. Sweet. That's great. I, 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 I appreciate you saying that. Uh, would love to watch a 878 Vikings live play. Ah, that might, be, that might be a cool thing to do. I'll think about that. For Games Workshop, for the affordable Trimordime, uh, Kitten Fly Cute says this. Uh, for Games Workshop alternative, uh, Trimordheim campaign missions with goals and, and consequences. Shame it's sadly dead as a franchise last time I checked. Plus, you build your army with gold. Um, yeah, well, that, that last part, the, the part that it's, it's kind of a dead franchise, it might mean that it's hard to get a hold of. But there, there's, there is 
an example. Uh, Rick Thompson says, it's kind of a shame that Disc Wars crashed and burned, but fun to have a sandboxy war game that doesn't need minis. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and Jared Benedict says, I'm with you on the drafting one, uh, the first game of Blood Rage. Um, a huge part of the game is knowing what others might potential have in their hand. It doesn't work well without that mechanic. I agree with that. Uh. <laughs> okay. Uh, Warhammer Champions or Shadespire? Right now, definitely Shadespire. Um, Warhammer Champions is uh, a card game that I've only played once, and I haven't really got wrapped my head around it completely, so Shadespire is definitely the win there. Uh, what do you think of Root? I haven't played it yet. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I have a whole bunch of seconds and thirds for the Vikings uh, live play. All right. Um, <clears throat> what is the threshold for buying a game you are not sure to like that is in sale if it's 30 percent off are you going to buy it well it depends on what the original price is 30 percent off of you know 10 bucks is only three bucks so i mean it, who cares you're not really that far off of the original price anyway but 30% off of a $6 game, where now you're talking in the range of about $20 off. So maybe I, maybe if I wouldn't have spent that extra $20 bill earlier, maybe I'm okay with spending it now because I, I know I'm going to get at least two or three plays out of it, what have you. Uh, so it really kind of comes to comes down to what your budget is like and whether or not you're going to be able to afford it. But uh, yeah, that's just uh, something you have to determine for yourself. Uh, let's see here. Um, I don't, uh, which side do you play in Star Wars Risk? I'm assuming you mean the new one that just came out where it's more like, uh, uh, Queen's Gambit. Uh, I, I usually, I usually play the, the Rebels just because I like playing the good guys. Um, but, uh, I have played the Empire as well and it's, it's been fun. Uh, how do Z and Tom handle that you are the funny one? I don't know that that is actually the case. Z is incredibly funny more often than not. Uh, do they take their jealousy out on you? No, I don't think that. I don't think that's the case at all. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and do uh, the lightning round, where I will field. I'm going to spend the next two minutes doing this because we're going to end here at about uh, ten after. Um, so the next two minutes we're going to spend doing lightning round where you ask me, you get, you posit a uh, comparison or a, an ultimatum, so to speak, this or this, and I will I will take one side or the other or neither or both. Uh, that's that's just the uh, freedom that I have with the lightning round. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, a couple of other things here uh, while we're waiting for those to start streaming in. Does anyone know if Stonebound Saga is good? As far as turn-based games like Fire Emblem, it looks interesting to me. Uh, so you guys can help out with that. Uh, da -da -da. <laughs> Dutch Yoda says, we really need a Cthulhu game where the old ones trade zombies in the Mediterranean. <laughs> uh, no. All right, Champions or Keyforge? Right now it's Keyforge. Uh, but I have I've, I've only played I've played Keyforge twice now. I've only played champions once So I'm, I'm liking Keyforge a little bit better, but got to play champions a little bit more uh, Tenjo or another luck based game <laughs> That's funny that has a that has a uh, uh, Inside story to it. So uh, uh, That I don't have time to explain right now odd or even I'm gonna go with even uh, let's see here. Uh, sweet or salty treats? Um, depends. Uh, I, I, I like a combination of sweet and salty, actually. Uh, DC or Marvel? Chad, Chad, Chad. Marvel. You just don't know me. Shadespire or Kill Team? Right now, Shadespire. I haven't, I've only got the one demo as far as experience with Kill Team is concerned. So uh, I don't know yet. Uh, uh, Vikings theme or 40K theme? Oof. 
Uh, right now, I think Vikings theme. It's a little bit more of a palatable theme across the boards. Um, Warhammer can get kind of uh, gruesome. Uh, not that Vikings themes can't. Uh, Eldritch Horror or Arkham Horror? Uh, I'm going to go with Eldritch Horror. I like it. It's a little bit more streamlined than Arkham Horror is, although now it's just almost just as bloated as Arkham was. Light Seekers or Warhammer? Uh, again, I've never played Light Seekers. I've only played the Warhammer Champions. I know that I, I, people have been saying that they're very similar, so uh, I don't know. Star Realms or Hero Realms? This is it. Okay, look. Uh, Two months ago, if you had asked me this question, I would have said Hero Realms down, you know, without the, without the shadow of a doubt. But uh, now that Star Realms has come out with Command Decks, uh, which is the uh, Star Realms answer to the character decks of uh, Hero Realms, uh, they are neck and neck. I really like both of them a lot. Pizza or tacos? Um, I'm not a big fan of tacos, so I'm going to go with pizza. Had you said pizza or burritos, I would have gone with burritos. Uh, let's see, Stone Age or Manhattan Project. I'm going to go with Stone Age because it's a little bit more family friendly. Uh, rock Star or Sports Star? Huh. Um, neither. Heads or Tails? Flip it. Um, lightsaber or Mjolnir? Ah, I'm going to go with Lightsaber. Um, it would be really cool to have a lightsaber. It'd be cool to have Mjolnir as well, but um, li lightsaber trumps that. 40K or Shadespire? Right now, Shadespire. 40K is uh, a little bit too much setup and tear down and, and uh, space taking. Uh, snowstorm or Thunderstorm? You know, I would, I would rather, I think, be in a snowstorm because you can go out and play in the snow. Maybe not during a snowstorm per se, but uh, snow at least gives you something to uh, goof around and have some fun in. It's not very fun to go out and play in the rain more often than not. Cap or Buckethead? I don't know what that means. Seagal or Van Damme? Neither. Um, <laughs> uh, Root or Vast? I haven't played either of them actually. Uh, Memoir 44 or Lords of Hellas? Memoir 44 is my, my favorite by far there. Uh, does Keyforge live up to the hype? I don't know. I don't know how much you've hyped it. Uh, Keys of the Kingdom or Omega Virus? Don't know. Oh, next for restoration. Ooh, maybe Omega Virus. That would be cool. Scorpion or Spider? Neither of them. They both should die horrible deaths. Uh, uh, sorry or Trouble? Ugh, neither of them. Star Wars theme or Vikings theme? Right now? I, I would be more interested in a Vikings theme, I think. Uh, it also depends on who's doing the game. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Nirishima Hex or Monolith Arena? Hmm. I don't know that I've ever played Monolith Arena. Um, so I'll have to go with Nirishima Hex there. Meg or Jaws? You know, I just recently watched Jaws a few weeks ago. It was playing on the Sci-Fi Channel or something like that. Um, and uh, Meg is, uh, I think, a better movie, although there are very many similarities, especially for the stupid decisions that people made during the film. Um, Mustaine or Hetfield? Um, I'm going to go... Right now, I'm going to go with... As an individual, I'm going to go with Dave Mustaine. Um... Um, that's not saying anything bad against Hetfield, of course, but uh, I just uh, I, I like Dave Mustaine a little bit better right now. New York or California? I don't know. Light or dark beer? Neither. I don't drink alcohol. Sorry. Uh, and that's about it. Wow, I've actually done about six minutes. So <laughs> we're done with lightning round. Uh, thank you, guys and gals and uh, folks, for joining. We certainly appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to do that. I do hope that you have enjoyed it. Uh, I've enjoyed being here, and I uh, thank you for all the, the, the questions that you guys posited. And I hope that I answered them as best I could. So uh, we will be getting on out of here. Thank you again so much for all the time you spend with us. And until next time, we'll see you guys on the flip side. 
Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.